That's the power of the canvas of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Episode six in the building now. Six weeks in. Episode six. Do you know what we're going to say? It's Rahi and Arbid in the morning. Sorry, what? It's Rahi and Jason in the morning. Oh, yeah, did I say Arbid? <laughs> My bad. You said Rahi. You know it's not Arbid, mate. Come on. Did you see the um the meme that said, we're, this was like last week, it was like, we're 35 claps away from Christmas. <laughs> 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 No, I ain't seen that. There's been way too oh, many. Oh, yeah, that is funny. Way too many. I'm not going to explain it because it's basically about clapping for NHS every week, but you people know that, right? Yeah, yeah. My my street has been clapping a lot the last few weeks. I haven't joined in, actually, this week. First time I've joined in. Did you? How did it make you feel? I didn't go outside, though. I just, like, I heard him clapping from, like, the window. So I just gave a couple of sla- slaps, a couple of claps, <laughs> and was, yeah, big them up, and then carried on with... Carried on with your day. People have been setting off fireworks and all sorts over here, letting the sheeps run around free and wild. And like, they're in their cars, hitting the horns, people are bringing out... Their p- pots and pans, banging yeah, it. Yeah, that's the one, that's, yeah, banging it and all that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Whatever works for you people. But yeah, I mean, they deserve it. We've even got like tits out for the NHS over here as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad it didn't happen here because... <laughs> I don't want to see that around here, fam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I definitely don't want to see that in this area. No way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nah. Speaking of tits. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who you got? Who you got? I was going to say... Um... You heard about Kim Jong Un? Oh yeah, yeah. Brain dead. Um, oh, there's a load of conflicting reports about him. Some are saying he's brain dead. Some are saying he's dead. Some are saying he's alive and well. I don't know who to believe. It depends on the source. I, I, I honestly, I, I remember I saw a meme. No, why do I keep saying meme? it wasn't a meme? I saw a um, someone did like a little questionnaire saying is Kong is Kong is Kim Jong Un alive? Yes, don't know. Like, who even picks yes? How do you know? Who who knows? Like, surely we all can just put we don't know. No one's going to put, oh, yes, he's definitely alive. How would, oh, he's definitely dead. How the hell would you know? Bro, it's North Korea. Who would know? Even they don't even know themselves. <laughs> so true. But I'm I'm interested to know how TMZ, who's one of the first to report it, where they got that from. Because TMZ is one that you can't just Yeah, they're dishel. not very reliable. When it no, comes but to, they're not. But yeah. then they were also the first to re- report on Kobe Bryant's death. But then they were remember they were also the, they were also the same people that said that oh it was Kobe's whole family like all his daughters and stuff like that. So, yeah, so I'm not really gonna they don't really have any credibility in my eyes. So I'm not gonna like believe anything they say until like I hear it from a credible source or well a credible source had said something. There's a source, Reuters, I think. I don't know actually how you pronounce it. But they said that Kim was in a vegetative state rather than being dead. But all I know is is that it's potentially quite peak for him at the moment. Yeah. Did you see the meme about Donald Trump? I mean, when it was like, I came to the funeral of my like enemy to make sure he was dead. And all the different like memes about... Well, do you know what? Talking about tits. <laughs> Back to the tits, are we? But another, he's another tit. I mean, like that. You must have heard about him suggesting the use of oh. disinfectants as a method of treatment. So just like injecting it into people. Or I think it was sunbeams or something as well. I can't remember. Something like that as well. Yeah. It was UV light. You understand? But to, the, to our fans in America um, who, been, who are listening to us, we see you. We see the stats. We see you out there. We just want to say we feel so sorry for you that that's your president I mean, we, we, we don't want to get too political here but yeah that nah, is no, it's, but, it's oh. madness like over from where we're at like it's just mad um did you see that so i think um it was the like the base like the ceos of like Dettol and some other like disinfecting companies basically gave like a a press a press release telling people not to not to inject their products into them to try and kill coronavirus because of what Trump said? Well, you know, they have to because the people were most likely going to give it a try because it's happened before because Trump suggested the use of another pharmaceutical product, which people thought, all right, we'll try. And then basically they got some sort of tablet, which is used to clean fish tanks. Tried that, died. Obviously, what more would you expect? 
So I'm happy that this, this Dettol and all these disinfecting companies put that release out because people would have done that. They would have tried it. Yeah, I hope, I hope people see it before they go and attempt it because it, I think so sometimes some things seem like common sense, right? And it seems like, like I would think, okay, but you know what they say? Common sense isn't common to everyone or common sense isn't common to the common people. So yeah, it is what it is, I guess. But yeah, I think those are our two tits of the week. Can we make that a regular award show? Tits of the week. <laughs> yes, we should. Tit of the week. Yeah. Like um, like the breakfast day with donkey of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be our one. <laughs> Tit of the week. Tit of the week. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think Trump takes the takes the trophy this week. We should do a more positive one as well, though. Like hero of the week or something. Just to balance it. Who do you have for the hero of the week? The NHS is of, of all the world. No, nah, that's okay. a cop out, bro. You, you, of course, that's <laughs> going to be for everyone. No, no, okay. You're going to have to have one for. Okay, so my hero of the week is John Krasinski. I don't even know how, how to say his last name, but basically Jim from The Office. Why? He is a star. So this, is, this was going to be in my recommendations at the end, but my. My friend, Matt, basically told me to check out his new YouTube channel called Some Good News. Um, There's about four episodes in and he basically has like his own kind of like news show where he basically picks out good news from all over the world, like whilst, what, before it's going on and basically just talks by. They're quite, they're like 15 minute, 16 minute episodes. There's only about four at the moment now. But honestly, I watched it and it was just, I had just, I just had a smile on my face the whole time. It's so heartwarming. Basically find stories that, of what like good things people are doing during this lockdown and and all of this and honestly check it out if like if if you haven't but yeah that's that he is my hero of the week because i watched it and i watched all four episodes and i was like this is amazing honestly because i know is... he's trying to bring a lot of good news and positivity out so that's i think that's brilliant in any sort of situation and also he's an awesome actor and who who can't forget about how sick he was in the office yeah the classic gym stare what a guy and talking about tv shows actually we alluded to the fact last week that we will talk about a certain tv show Casa de Papel. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I was, what? Whoa, wait, what? Are you what? We were, so, what, we were so not on the same wavelength at all. What the hell? We were so. Wow, wow. When wow, did we I. How, la, last week, how did I ever at one point mention Troy and Arbed? I don't know. I don't know. Because I thought we. I, bro, I don't know. <laughs> I, what? I don't know. What? <laughs> what? what? Yeah, that was, that, that, was, that was such a fail. Wow. That was a fail. <laughs> no, but lot. yeah, like Casa de Papel. That's yeah, the one. Casa de Papel. Yeah, no, we were going to chat about that. What did you think? What did you think? Honestly, love it. Love it. Oh, man. Spanish shows. I, I love, Sp- I, I really love Spanish speaking shows. Yeah, what other Spanish speaking shows do you watch? Elite. Have you seen that? Okay, and what that else was, do you that watch? Was, that was, season three was good. Uh, okay. Narcos. Is that Spanish speaking though? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's well, not. Narcos it's counts. Not, it's not primarily Spanish speaking though, is it? Yes. Okay, well, I, well, mm. uh, okay. well mostly Give me another though. Spanish show. Um, you love Spanish speaking shows. It's got to be more than two, bro. Narcos. Narcos Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> nah bro It's literally On the same category As people say Oh I love the new Pink Floyd album. Like, I, just, I just love the Whole <laughs> Discovery And it's like Alright tell me The third album oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think I'm actually I'm still sat here Trying to think of Other like Spanish shows That I've watched You don't watch Any other Spanish shows bro I do I do Go on then um, I just can't think of them Right now It's they probably come up to me throughout the episode. Just... All right, all right, man, all right. Um... But yeah, no, back back to like Casa de Papel. <laughs> no, I thought it was really good. Um, I think I like the angle that they go with because I think now that you're starting to notice like they're trying to put little kind of like like little lessons in there. Like, such as? Just like to do like society sort of thing. I think they're, they're, they're trying to, I think it's about beating like the um the system sort of thing. But yeah, I've actually really loved it. I like, I don't want to give any spoilers because it's still quite new, isn't it? What's quite new? I swear you said in a previous episode that if it's been more than two weeks on a Netflix show or something, then it's no longer a spoiler. Yeah, but I think, like, for example, there's been shows that have come on and I'm literally like, I don't want to watch it straight away. Like, I just, like, I didn't watch, like I said, the Papel straight away. I gave it maybe a couple of weeks before I actually watched it. But then I watched it all in, like, a couple of days. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm a big fan how the story, I think it's well written. I think the, act, the acting is well, is well done as well. Who's your Who's your favorite character in there? In the show, hmm. Before this season, it would have been Denver. I just feel like in this season, he just, he's just gone a bit moist. 
but otherwise he used to be quite cool in the first three otherwise overall probably the professor i knew you're gonna say that why i don't know it's just because because he's really smart yeah he just reminds me of me to be fair so mine is um either tokyo or nairobi yeah, it reminds me of you. Because I think they're badasses. Yeah, it reminds me of you. Who, um, Tokyo? Just both of them, don't I? Both of them, yeah? Ah, oh, fair enough. What, a badass, yeah? Badass female. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> 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 nah, 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 legit, legit. They are badass characters, though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, yeah? what? No. The ending. Don't do it. <sighs> ending oh man it's a pretty big spoilers mate yeah it's a big spoiler i can't say it. it's actually a big spoiler so but then in the last episode we said we we're going to talk about la casa de papel so people should have watched it we should have but we've had we've had warnings from our listeners before please don't spoil it please <sighs> all right fine and of course we are loyal to our millions and millions and millions of followers so all around the world by the way it's gotta be what it's gotta be but it is brilliant and i, I can't think of any other non-speaking english non-english speaking series that's that's gone as viral as casa de papel house money heist what gone oh yeah yeah narcos, narcos mexico <laughs> yeah. narcos mexico narcos the original the original <laughs> the original bro that's not a spanish series but it is though it's not though why is it not why, well, it's because... developed by a whole english team it's not it doesn't count as a spanish speaking series it's not developed what about, in, what? by a spanish speaking country it's not whatever like yeah it's still an american product you said foreign right so what about does anime count no we're talking like why not? legit tv shows Fair enough. I mean, I don't watch anime anyway, but... Do you not? Why not? I watch anime. It's mad. I'm not like an anime fan. I've watched like... I've watched um The couple. mainstream ones that everyone says you yeah. should watch. Death Note was amazing though. Let's be honest here. I've watched Death Note and I've watched... Um, I've watched some of... um. What's the one with a big... With a big beast? I forgot what, called, what it's called. Attack on Titans. Attack on Titan. Yeah, that's the one. Mighty, mighty yeah, show. That's the only two that I think I've watched. Yeah. I feel like anime has... T- some of the shows have too many episodes. So you should not even like get into... It, it's just long. I heard is it doesn't like isn't Naruto has like something <sighs> stupid like 700 episodes or something like that. Yeah, well, you got all the time in the world now. You everyone has the time now. I, I don't actually, I don't. I've got things to be doing. You got to catch up with the whole series within about a month. Nah, I ain't got time. I you'd have to watch nothing else and do nothing else for a month and just watch that. I, I cannot, I don't have that much time. It's not about you, Jace. It's not about you. It's it is not about, about you. It is about it's me. Not about it's you. about me and it's my time. People. I value my time. It's about. It's not about you though. It's about the people that listen in and about their time. And maybe Naruto yeah, is the want, way they to don't, go. They don't want to spend. They don't want us to talk about. Are you the voice of the anime? people? Why not? I'm sure they don't. All right, let's do a, Ask the audience. <laughs> <laughs> ask the damn audience. If you talk about tits, oh, back to. <laughs> 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 uh, a pa- what about oh my goodness um no nah, okay so talking about tits what about us or refusing uh pay cut but i agree with him i don't think he's a t- at all a big good on him like i don't Is think it? i don't think people should and I think I thought it was, actually, let me take it back. When I first read it, right, it was like Ozil and two other Arsenal players refused to take a pay cut, right? I felt like it was bait. Basically try and um, make him feel bad. That's the worst thing about media these days anyways. Yeah, that's what I, that was my first reaction. I was like, ah, oh, this is basically an attempt to... Character assassination, basically. Yeah. But then, and the, and the thing is, when you find out, like if you find out about, if you find out what Elza's been doing, right, Elza is, is someone who gives away a lot to charity. And I know he's, I've heard he pays a lot for like people's surgeries and kids and stuff like that. So people don't know what people are doing with their money. Like just because someone is well paid doesn't mean they can afford to just give money away because you don't know what they're doing with that money in the first place. You don't know, you don't know how many people are depending on them. Like they could, they could be paying for loads of people's health mortgages stuff like that so you can't turn around and, and try and dictate how someone spends their own money so so for them to turn around and be like oh Erzul doesn't isn't giving money away and people are trying to slate him for it that's just I think that's uncalled for and I saw as well I don't understand why people from let's say a less financial earning status go off on people with a lot of money like as if it's their responsibilities to pay for everyone else. And I, like, for example, Idris Elba was talking about how people of, like, let's say the farming and agriculture sector will be struggling during this period and so on. 
And yet all I see in the comments is like, oh, well, you got enough to pay for them. Why didn't you help them out? It's just like, firstly, how do you know that he isn't? Exactly. Secondly, it's not his responsibility just because he's just because he's made a name for himself, earned his money doesn't mean he he can't have an opinion or thoughts about how other, others might be struggling like it. I don't understand why people feel the, the need to make people feel bad about their own success or their own income. Like, what's that all about? I've just been seeing too much of that. I think sometimes people don't realize that just because what someone shows you isn't necessarily everything or it's most of the time it's not everything. So you might think someone has loads of money or you might have heard that they earn this amount, this amount of money or they have this, this as how much they're worth. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have that as disposable cash. Some people could be, some people could have their own businesses. And if you're telling them to suddenly give like 25 of their money away that means they can't pay their own staff so you can't turn around and be like oh yeah you earn a lot of money so you should give away this much but then what about the other people who are dependent on me what about my staff that i pay what about this person what about that person like and even roy Keane was even like roy Keane. i saw a video where he's literally like he doesn't think he feels a top if he was a player at a top club he wouldn't take a pay cut because when these billionaires who own this club have they're the first to remind you that this is a business so why did they not? So why are they now turning around? What now in this situation and trying to tell people to take a pay cut? When if it was the other way around, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. If if there's a contract, right? Let, let's put it this way. Say for example, and I'll give an example actually because that I watched this week. Say actually, no, let me just use the real the real life example that I that I know of. So I don't know if anyone has watched The Last Dance on Netflix. It's about Michael Jordan and the Bulls in 1990s, right? So Scottie Pippen was one of the best players in the league around that time. Literally, like he was literally number two to Michael Jackson. So one of the top players in the league. Michael Jackson or Michael Jordan? Michael Jackson. Sorry, Michael Jordan. Sorry, people. So, right. So, Scotty Pippen, one of the best players in the league at that time. Second to Michael Jordan. He has a rubbish contract, right? He signed a rubbish contract when he first, like, when he signed. Now that the Bulls are killing it, he's one of the best players in the league. Did he, he even asked for a, a pick. They said, nah, that's the contract, bro. You, you can't get, do you know what I mean? So, if in good times, and Roy Keane said this, if the, if the, like, their clubs are going through good times like that, these, they're not going to turn around and be like, oh yeah, we're going to, they, they're not going to just part away with their money voluntarily like that so if they if you have a contract to honor they should just honor it don't turn around and tell me that oh uh, can you please take a pay cut because this this and that because they, they believe me they can afford it so people trying to make Urza feel bad when he has when he has people depending on him and he's trying to do help other people what about the other people that he's that he's um that he's focusing on um and trying to help that's not fair on them so people should basically basically the moral of the story right mind your business don't pocket watch other people's money and yeah stay safe and stay inside so what we're saying is is that Urzel is not a tit? No, not at all. Not at all. And this is coming from someone who hates Arsenal, by the way, guys. I yeah not a fan but he's I rate Urza for what he does because he helps a lot of people what do you think Rahi? Oh, do you know what though he 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 helps out a fair amount and then that reminds me of Amir Khan I saw a funny video with him right uh, so he is dropping food boxes off to the elderly and <laughs> like he's the guy's wearing gloves and everything yeah <laughs> and he knocks on the first lady's door <laughs> you're supposed to be self this and my guy walks right into their house to drop off the box oh, I'm just days. like come <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> nah, he's a funny guy though. Like massive respect. Like, he's he's been is as part of the charity foundation he set up. He was going out and donating boxes of food to the elderly and vulnerable. But yeah, I just found that Big funny. Him up. Big him up. Yeah, he big up. I mean, Khan. Yeah, yeah. Let's give him a clap. Okay, clap Amir Khan is a legend in that sense. Just he's he's been donating laughs for about a good five six years now. He's a good, he's, he's a good he's very memeable. Massively, <laughs> unintentionally as well. That's the thing. He's like he does it unintentionally as well. He's just unintentionally funny. I said good boxer, funnier person. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think his his whole career has been like it could have been better, and I think he'd agree with it as well. But he's done amazing in the sense that he's he's fought some big names. He's made the money. He's made his legacy as well. Yeah, fair play. To him. Play to him. He's inspired a lot of people, I, I assume. Maybe a lot of like Pakistani men. Why just Pakistani men? What about Bangladeshis? He's British Asian, so he can inspire me okay. as well. Okay, he's inspired a lot of British Asians to maybe take up the sport. Thank you, um, Amir Khan, for inspiring all the British Asians. We'd love to see you. Uh, to be fair, as a British Asian, I was more inspired by Jay Sean. Yeah? <laughs> What a guy he was. Who inspired you as a British Ghanaian? As a, as a, as a British Ghanaian, who inspired me? Or who inspires me? 
or, or someone that you saw make it to the big stage and you're like, yo, I'm inspired. I don't know if I was necessarily inspired by a British Ghanaian or I think I was just, I was just inspired by maybe like other black people. It doesn't, it didn't necessarily matter which country they were from. Yeah, that's fair. In the same sense that I was saying Amir Khan doesn't have to be Bengali. From yeah, the, yeah. It's just, yeah, sure. Who inspired you? Jonathan, growing up, who did I, even, I don't even know what I wanted to be when I was growing up. I had so, I had so many different things that I wanted to do and just having people who not necessarily, like I was, so, okay, so my heroes growing up were people like Will Smith, right? I just thought he was so cool. And not even because I wanted to be an actor or anything. I didn't think I was creative at all. But I think sometimes when people do well in their craft, it shows you that it kind of inspires you to also do well in what you do. And I think for me, it doesn't have, always have to be someone who does the exact same thing as you. So it wasn't necessarily a case of, oh, I want to be... Like, I, I used to read a lot of autobiographies. So I've read I've read all sorts. So I've read like David Beckham, Wayne Rooney, just like random people, right? Um, that kind of inspired me to want to do well in whatever I do and not necessarily oh like I want to be a footballer or I want to be a musician or I want to be a, I want to be this I want to be that I just wanted to be good at what I was doing or what I ended up doing I wanted to make sure I was decent at it and I mean what I do now I didn't have many people who look like me who do that who did that or pe- I didn't necessarily see many scientists who look like me at that age or growing up so it's a case of I just did it because that's what I wanted to do and not because oh there was someone who was a scientist who then I'm like oh I want to be like that person if that makes sense I don't, I don't know if I'm making sense no you totally do to be inspired that person doesn't have to be in your field or your field of interest it's just, for example like you mentioned Will Smith as you saw him making a success for himself and you just thought okay if he can do something big and make a name for himself so can I it doesn't have to be like as an acting frame but yeah I totally get you exactly that so Will Smith is not in our tit of the week category no no definitely not here Will Smith is my guy Nelson Mandela that's someone that I loved a lot I read a lot about him when I was growing up I actually I actually remember right so let's go back to Will Smith so I remember for one black history month once right i am um, had to do basically we had to do a presentation on one famous black person right and everyone kind of like did like a powerpoint presentation and all that and obviously me being extra i decided hmm i think this was probably when i was like maybe like 13 14 and i thought you know what i'm not going to do the same thing that everyone's doing so i did, I, I went on me- windows movie maker and i made a film about will smith and basically had like a, one of his songs I can't, I can't remember which song i chose switch i think no no i actually think it was just the, i think it was just the theme song fresh prince yeah yeah it was that it was that and i made a basically about his life story in, into like a short film and i remember i got so many applause got the highest grade got got gassed up basically and i remember feeling good and i still remember that to this day i really loved him i think i've seen every single one of his films and everything like he's done and you know what his son jaden has got a good bag of creative genes as well i think he's quite talented as an artist do you think being creative is something you're born with or something you kind of like can work on i think it's a bit of both i think you definitely have to be born with a bit of creative not genius but just have a bit of that creative spark uh, for me like i don't know where mine comes from i've always had that creative need to like oh i oh, i just have a burst of creative energy like oh okay well, i'm gonna make this video and like like now for example i'm making all these videos and whatnot and there's other people who just don't have an ounce of that they see things as systematic or like black and white whereas for maybe me and you like I, or just others in the creative industry or artists in general they just see things in color and see things in a different way and i think you've got to be born with that and how far you take it depends on what you learn as well as with anything is what you craft that knowledge with but for sure yeah creativity is something you either have or don't have in my opinion i think I, for example i remember when i was trying when i was learning when i was learning an instrument i remember someone being told that if you're good at maths you'll be good at this instrument because it's quite it's a lot about like numbers and stuff like that and i think for someone like me right so the way my brain works like i think i'm i think i'm quite creative and if i kind of put i don't think i've had enough i don't think recently like in the last few years i've had enough or i've put enough time to actually work on my creativeness just because of where life has taken me but i remember kind of like actually i disagree with that i think you have you've been you're a scientist so science is a form of creativity is a form of art yeah i guess so i guess okay no 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 you're right you're right you're right you're right actually i remember someone saying that actually saying that recently as well where yeah no you're right you're right it is it, it is a crazy because even when it comes to like thinking like creative thinking think about it when you're designing a, an experiment you are using the creative side to think okay i could use this i could do that i could draw this up blah 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 it's creativity that is true but i think like so when when i was younger right i used to dance so i used to like so i used to like break dance and stuff like that say it louder i used to make i used to break dance (laughs) right (laughs) and i used and so basically i used to make like the backing tracks that we used to dance to and i i actually thought i wanted to be a dj at that point because i thought because i actually thought i was sick at making mix i used to make some banging tracks for us for us to dance to but then, you know, when like, as you get older, you have to take education more seriously. You th- and because I was quite busy,
busy either training or studying that side of me kind of like I had to put it to to the side and I always think obviously if you don't work on it you don't get better so I, obviously I don't think I'm better than I was but I do definitely think I was definitely born with some kind of creativeness and creative ability and maybe it's just a case of enhancing it massively and you know how I was saying you should take a, this period of lockdown to bolster or be as creative as possible to maintain your sanity I think that is so true like being creative or having a creative outlet is it's amazing in, in, in being able to express your feelings and I genuinely feel like for example me the other day I couldn't sleep so I was just like I want to make a video out of nowhere and I just felt like it was a great way to just put all my feelings onto one piece of art I suppose in whatever way it was but it was really cool but I was going to talk about the lockdown I was going to say do you feel like you're getting used to all of this as in like for me I remember the hysteria like at the start of it where everyone was like getting really like you know like oh my god got to stay in all day and whatnot but now it just feels like normal life to me yes and no yes in the sense that I think I found a routine now in terms of studying and what I'm doing and, and working from home so I found a routine which works for me now so that's helping me but I haven't got used to it because everything basically every meeting I have with my lab group or with my supervisor it's kind of like when we get out of here so there's no it's not so it's kind of like looking to the future so it's, it's so it's basically I've got used to it now that I'm working at home every day but I haven't got used to it because I can't really do that much at home yeah I hear that I hear that I hear that yeah 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 so I haven't really got used to it because everything I'm doing basically it's about as soon as we get out of here this is what I'm going to be doing whereas some people whether you work from home or whether you work from the office you're basically doing the same work so you're just not really impacting you that much whereas for me this lockdown is impacting me a lot because most of what I do is practical so it's lab based right yeah I mean it's just more than not it's the same in that sense but it's just like yeah like practical as well but it's just like I'll waking up at this time as in like not going out here but it just feels less of a I don't know just feels less of a crazy phenomenon as the days goes on and it just becomes more instilled and just more normal way of practice I feel like even when I went to the shops today I just it didn't feel strange anymore to see not see many people out there whilst what I'm saying is whilst I'm used to it I still miss just normal way of living like we were saying very much so yeah yeah like traveling even something like being in the airport going through security running to the gates or oh, I just I just miss it like so much I can't wait to just hear passport and boarding pass please ah oh, then I'll be like good times yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly that exactly that yeah. or even just watching sports or just normal things and i do and i get that sort of like feeling of missing that way of life every now and then just like a, a flush of emotions like damn i miss it but then also at, at other times i'm just like it just doesn't because because i remember the, the initial feeling of oh wow we're going into lockdown oh man this is crazy but now it's just it's, it, it feels less and less like that yeah i agree I actually i i honestly see what you're what you're saying i just hope people don't get too used to it uh yeah we yeah but you know there's still a month of it to go well i think it harks back to what we were talking about a couple of episodes ago in a sense that you know we can't really predict how long it will take for us to get out of this cycle when when lockdown is over it's all up in the up in the air because there's no telling this is as much as it is a cliched word now but it is unprecedented time so the only thing is we only know as we go through it but as of right now we're we're still deep into lockdown and we don't know when it's gonna end and it's just like Oh, it just feels normal even do you know what though I've got to say for me I find sleep time boring now as in like it's probably the worst part of my day as in like I feel like the days aren't long enough and every time it gets to go into sleep I'm like damn it I don't want to like it's just I mean obviously we get that in during normal time actually I don't know even during normal times I was just like yeah, yeah I can't wait to go to bed and go to sleep but now because we're confined in our houses it's just like ah oh, this is dead man I don't want to go to sleep what's the point sleep doesn't hit the same anymore it doesn't because we're not outside anymore we're not away from our beds all day so we don't miss it as much and now is literally the part of the day which I hate the most as in like nah I don't want to I've got to otherwise that's my brain functions gone I think people I mean obviously just try and keep your sanity as much as possible but I think what has worked for me and I felt like I've been a lot happier recently because I haven't because I'm having proper days now so I'm I'm waking up early in the morning and basically studying till like five six ish and then maybe going for like a walk or exercise or run or something and then chill out or do work on what we're working on and stuff like that so that gives me it gives it gives me structure to my day and I'm someone who likes to know I think I think I go crazy when it's just whatever. So I don't know what I'm doing today. I'm waking up and maybe I'll figure out what I'm doing later.
later on that doesn't work for me whereas it, the fact that i know that i'm waking up early i'm gonna i'm gonna study from this time to this time i'm gonna have lunch and then i'm gonna work on this i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna go out for a walk at like six seven ish that gives me that gives me sanity because i'm someone who, who quite i like things quite in an orderly fa- in an orderly fashion so maybe if some people are finding it a bit crazy maybe try something like that just try and give yourself a bit of structure just try and figure try and plan your week maybe plan your monday to friday and see how that works for you and if, and if it doesn't try and figure something else like it's all about trial and error and trying to figure out what works best for you i've had a bit of a spanner in the works now so we just started fasting and that's like just gotta recalibrate on how i'm running my days so obviously i've got to be awake at around three in the morning to have uh breakfast comparing fasting in lockdown to comparing to fasting like not maybe like last year how, how are you finding is it easier or is it harder it's easy in the sense that i'm not outside and i'm not all running all around so i won't get thirsty and not hungry as much because you're not exerting energy really because you're not walking about outside so much you're pretty much staying inside so you are reserving energy it's just about how you keep your mind on certain things but at the same time you are still lacking in energy i'm probably only saying it from my point of view because i'm living away from family so i've got to think about what to cook and whatnot <laughs> life would be so much easier if i was still with the fam at this current moment and oh, then all right, gotcha. that'd be a lot of things <laughs> off my mind because my mom would have taken care of that but as of right now i'm just like uh i've got to think about what i'm making for food or whatever or like uh, now is it because you're sorry go on. no now i've gone down the strategy of like because i don't like to sleep and then wake up again to eat and then go back to sleep because it just i just feel sick from doing that so what i've been doing is staying awake and then going to sleep after i have my breakfast around three or whatnot but then again that just means i've got to sleep less and then wake up early because i always like to wake up i hate waking up at like 12 to two o'clock in the afternoon so that means i'll get less sleep and whatnot so i'm still trying to uh, judge on what's the best way to go about it but that's kind of the way i've been going so far all right i mean it's only a couple of days in right now oh three how many days in now yeah only a couple of days in okay so you figure it out like eventually how yeah what, that's that's like every year days, what works every year like last year i was trying to figure out how what's the best way to uh, what was the best best method of fasting because i had exams at the time the year before that i didn't have exams but it was more so about i think it was i can't remember it was just it was calm actually yeah but last year was the first year and then this year i was thinking or right, how am i going to approach it this year because i'm working and whatnot but look it's it makes life easier the fact that we're in lockdown is because i'm thinking if we weren't in lockdown it would have been so much harder to work because i'd have no coffee or whatever and i usually i rely on coffee in the morning to just give me a bit of a boost and then and without it, I'd have been like, and fasting on top of that and having to travel into work and all, all of that, it would have been a lot more difficult. But the fact that I get to work from home now, it is a bit of a blessing in disguise. So, for example, from my experience, I eat more when I'm, when I'm at home. That yeah. I'm out. So even this is even like say if I, if I decide oh I don't want to go into uni today I want to work from home I want to do my work at home I find myself snacking a lot more because I just walk over to the kitchen and see what's in there and stuff like that. Do, are you finding it quite similar? Like in the case where you're finding it harder because you're not you can't snack as much as you would when you're usually at home, or are you not a snacker anyway? I'm not snacking any. I'm not. I am. You you know me and the the weight I once reached, but even now I don't have a choice because I'm at home. <laughs> I'm away from home and I haven't bothered buying much from the shops and so i wouldn't have any choice anyways but i haven't actually been that hungry in a sense that i wanted to snack so much so in the day it's when i had that freedom that i was eating a lot when i wasn't fasting but right now i'm not finding the the urge to like oh i really want to eat when you're fasting i think it's the, the most challenging part hasn't been the hunger really it's been more so the thirst especially when it was during the summer periods anyways that's been really what gets you like it's like oh man i could really like for example when i broke my fast today oh i, I downed that bottle of water so quick because and you appreciate <laughs> water so much more than when you're not like you really forget how just how great it is to have water man like legit more so than food i'm just like damn this tastes so good i love of water i'm gonna say that <laughs> it's so good <laughs> but you really do and that's why part of like the great benefits of fasting is like you just learn to just reappreciate what you have i love water oh my god i'm thirsty again <laughs> all right so since we're talking about food right there's a lot because of because of this whole situation there's a lot of food being wasted at the moment because there's no because obviously business some businesses are out and stuff so the suppliers can't sell the foods to them so they're literally throwing away so much food why would they throw it away when there's loads of people literally starving that need a food bank wouldn't they not think of doing that but i think the reason so the reason why they're dumping it because it's actually cheaper to just do that than to give it than to because they have to transport it and stuff like that which all costs money so for them to donate it it'll cost them loads of money to go and donate it so it's very it's easier 
to just dump it away. And I, this week, I actually found out that so apparently a farmer in Idaho, um, which is in America, gave away two million potatoes. Just apparently, he just dumped it somewhere to give to people to come and just come and come and take as much as you want for free because he couldn't sell it. And because some of the so basically some of the companies who he sells it to a lot of like companies, so like big restaurants and stuff like that. And because they some of them aren't buying because of the situation that we're in, he actually ha- he doesn't have as much customers. So it lit- there's literally like so much food to waste, and that's not just the case of like milk or potatoes. I think it, it's a lot for other foods as well. And even even I think even like oil. Like I, I think I was apparently some some oil companies are literally giving away extra oil for free, trying to tell people to just take as much as they can. Free oil? Are you serious? I think it was like petrol. I think I read it somewhere. Basically, they're giving them like extra for free because it's just easier to just give it to them. Like petrol is really really cheap. This is I think this is the cheapest petrol has been in like years. Is your car on petrol? It's literally yeah. yeah. So I I talked to I filled I filled my tank just for fun the other day because I could because I could have because I could afford to. So I so I thought. Wait, why not have it? Tell just... someone who doesn't drive what's the difference in prices is before and after. When I first started driving, two thousand and seven. When I got my two thousand seventeen, two thousand seventeen. When I, petrol was one one two per litre, which is alright. It's not. It's it's alright. But then. Since I've been since I've been driving since then no that was a, that was a, yeah yeah 112 per liter and it's gone up to probably like 130 132 right now at Costco petrol is 99p per liter damn that's how cheap it is that's mental I know two people in Canada who literally were telling me so when I told them because uh, I couldn't believe it, I was like raw petrol is really this cheap at the moment they literally were like oh yeah by the way it's like 60 cents in here I was like what that's crazy so it's no longer expensive to drive well I mean there's nowhere to go <laughs> so. <laughs> Ah, that's a good point, actually. (laughs) Could you not, right? Could you not buy a load of petrol now and then store it up for later use? Yeah, I guess you could, to be fair. You could get loads of, like, jerry cans, fill them up whilst it's cheap, fill up your car, fill up your jerry cans, and get ready for when this all blows over. But I think I think it'll stay low for now. I think the, the reason why it's low is because obviously we can't drive anywhere, so we're just out here. And you know, drive, like I think I, I drive my car every now and then when I go to like the shops to pick up essential items. Apart from that, I don't really go anywhere, so my car is just there, full of full of petrol, nowhere to go. Paying insur paying paying insurance. Oh yeah, the fact that you got to pay insurance is kind of peak. Yeah, I mean, I feel sorry for the people who are paying monthly. Like they literally pay the last couple of months or so, and literally it's just there. I pay yearly, so it doesn't really matter to me because we just have to get back to normal life but imagine you're paying monthly and you're seeing the money come out this month and you're literally like I haven't even touched my car this month but you've had to pay you've had to pay car insurance that's annoying but hey what can you do like they say of course and like my favorite saying is it is what it is you know you just have to when weird times at the moment so it is what it is is. is. oh by the way talking about food we mentioned as well you were saying that Nando's are doing deliveries now no 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 no. they're not not doing it apparently they they are re considering whether they might start doing delivery so there's a possibility that they might come back which i think they've been listening to us because hey that time and it's just we literally mentioned this last episode and all of a sudden they're thinking about delivery even some the powers that be definitely heard our podcast because how do you because we said oh if nando's delivered they would kill it boom a few days later Mm, yeah we're thinking about how it would work we might be delivering blah 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 come on they're listening to us that's the power of the canvas of life people so if you guys need any other places that we want us to you know speak to people for you just let us know we'll mention on here and within a week or so they will start doing it so yeah that's us at the moment where did you hear about this how did you know about this I saw apparently so was, Nando's tweeted it or tweet or replied to someone who asked them if they're going to be doing delivery and they said they were thinking yes. about it yes I've been missing them. Ah, literally, right? When this lockdown is over, the first day back, I'm not eating at home for at least three days. I'm having breakfast out, I'm having lunch out, I'm having dinner out, literally. Basically, you'll be spending all the money that you've been saving during lock- lockdown. I'm going to, literally, I'm literally going to come home. You know, you know when we were younger, right? And people used to just go out with nothing to, nowhere to go, just out for the sake of being out. <laughs> yeah, not back until four o'clock. I wouldn't know about that. I, I grew up in an Asian household, but still, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come home just to change, shower, change, and back out again. I'm just, I'm going to just be out, being reckless. I cannot be reckless because, but yeah. Oh, speak. I've got another tip of the week. I just remembered. French Montana. Oh, uh, why? So for those of you who don't know who French Montana is, French Montana is a US rapper, right? So he randomly put out 
a statement saying that when it comes to music, bar for bar, when it comes to making hit songs, he is better than Kendrick Lamar. Is there a, a reason why he went straight for Kendrick? No idea. Literally unprovoked, unprovoked. Just started on Kendrick for no reason. Wow. Now, that triggered me, not only because Kendrick one of my favourite rappers, but also because someone put a song, like French Montana's top songs, right? 70% of those songs were features, so they weren't even his songs. How can you then turn around and say you make better hits or you make or you, when it comes to hits, you make as one of like the best rappers of our generation? Come on, bro. Come on. Was he saying he's a better rapper or just a better um, better artist? No, he said he, he said he makes when it comes to hits. He's just as he said he makes he's basically holds his own when it comes to making hits. Like as in like big bangers, right? Is he talking in terms of numbers? He said he 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 he's the one that gets the place jumping. Like he'd get the place jumping. Is he wrong? Hundred percent. Why? Because when it comes to music, like so, so one one of my friends like, explained this to me. Right, he he basically said if this was a festival, French Montana is like the early evening act sort of thing. You know, oh, the graveyard shift. <laughs> This is not even a graveyard. This is when people are walking into the, like, you know, people are getting ready to go. <laughs> to That's a graveyard, isn't the... it? That's graveyard. No, graveyard is like, is like, it doesn't work in this context, I don't think. I don't think you can use that in this context. Because graveyard is like in the morning. Like, you know when you listen to like radio shows and stuff. Graveyard to me is like a dead shift. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. Well, okay, then if that's what, if that's what it means to you, then okay, then yeah, that that kind of thing. Whereas Kendrick would be kind of like the headline act, which is facts, and I agreed with that. So that for me makes Kendrick Lamar. No, sorry, French Montana. Another tip of the week. So I don't know why you would send for Kendrick. Kendrick is just an insane artist lyrically, creatively as well. There's no comparison. I think even like what's it called? Even if you'd gone for someone like Tiger. Oh, okay, fair enough. Even though Tiger, I, I, even I still think Tiger is better than French Montana. But even that, I'd be like, okay, fair enough. But Kendrick, he went straight for the top. Tiger is a better artist than French Montana. But he didn't say, he he went all the way to Kendrick. Do you agree or disagree? Is Tiger a better artist than French Montana? Personally, I'd, I'd listen to Tiger before I listen to French. I've, I've listened to Tiger more in the past than I have listened to French. I, I think he's just musically a better artist than French. Um, apart from, so this week, right? If you... Before this week, if you were to ask me, name a song by French Montana, I would have said Unforgettable. That's literally <laughs> yeah. the only song I could think of. And then when I then started, so when I asked, okay, fair enough, let's see what other songs. So I, I typed his name on YouTube to see what other songs he has. I was like, okay, oh yeah, oh, fair enough. Maybe this was his song. Oh, he was on this song. Okay, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. He's got a few songs. He's got a few like good songs, a few like hits, but he's not, but a lot of them were features. For example, Loyal by Chris Brown. That's not his song, but he would duck. Someone included that with his track. And I'm like, mate, come on. There's another song, Stay Ski. In. that's rick ross's song that's not your song you know so yeah so for me like i saw this kind of and i was like mm, mm, come on mate but maybe but maybe it's a maybe he went for kendrick because he knows that it'll get people talking more he's smart it's it's like marketing 2020 basically you he's going down the method of trump as in the sense of saying something so absurd that it gets people wound up in such a way that they can't stop talking about it so therefore it's such an absurd thing to say that now we're talking about it if he was to go for someone who's on his level and it wasn't crazy we wouldn't be talking about it because it would just be like ah yeah i fell for it because i went to youtube to actually listen to some of the songs that there we go so i gave him some yeah and probably people gonna who listen to this podcast are not gonna be like okay let me check out this french guy and so we've basically given it, given him free publicity. So yeah, we fall for the trap. We suck. No, you suck. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I had to get that off my chest. Fair dues, fair dues. Now to wrap up this week, we should look at the stats. I'm actually, what did we say last week? We're on two point seven k or something. Two point seven mil, I believe. And yeah, now we're almost towards three mil overall. 200,000 deaths, unfortunately. Recovery is getting there, isn't it? It's getting towards a mil, so a third. So another clap to the NHS and all the other NHSs of other people's world. So. Always. Lovely, lovely. Big them up, big them up. What's your recommendations for this week? So I already said one earlier, which was check out some good news on YouTube by John Krasinski, Jim from The Office, recommended to me by my good friend, Matt Spicer, one of the best sports massage therapists in Cardiff. So check him out as well. Free publicity for him. Yeah. So I've really enjoyed watching it. It's, it's quite, if you if you want to listen to some, just some good, some good news, basically, you want to hear some good positive news, some just amazing things that people have been doing for people, trying to help people out in this situation, then check it out. You'll, you'll enjoy. I watched it and I literally was like, this is amazing. If I was a choir... 
I definitely would have would have dropped a couple of tiers, but I'm not, so I didn't. I am currently watching. What am I watching? No, I'm still reading. I'm, I'm reading. I'm still reading Americana, which I mentioned last week. I have started watching Kim's Convenience season four, which is quite cool. It's a nice show, a Canadian show. So you know, you know, Canadians are nice. So it's a nice, it's a nice show. Yeah, season four just came out. It came out a few weeks ago, and I've only just started watching it now. But I, one of my one of my Canadian friends recommended it to me a couple of years ago, and I really got into it, and I've really been enjoying it. So yeah, check it out. And yeah, that's what I can think of in terms of entertainment. How about you, Rahi? I would recommend you guys watch Mr. Robot. It was recommended to me by Rahi. Check him out. He's got a great podcast. Best podcast they're about. Yeah. So I'd say Mr. Robot. Brilliant show. And I think, again, I'll repeat, it's if you're smart, watch it. If you're not, you won't enjoy it. So it's really up to you on which category you fall into. Other thing, a legit recommendation, another one would be to watch Limitless. It's a pretty decent show. It's one which, if you've seen the film Limitless starring Bradley Cooper, you'd be like, damn, I remember that. And it was a really good film because it is. And they carry that on into the TV series. There's only one season, so there's not much to watch, 22 episodes. But it's a good thrill ride, and I think you will enjoy it. And there is actually some links to the movies, which I'm not going to explain. But once you see it, you'll be like, damn. They did something which most TV shows which are adapted from films don't normally do. And that's actually have a link to the film. So it's really good and it's really worth a listen and watch. So watch it. That's my entertainment recommendation of the week. I just remembered something. Yeah, what? Um, Let Last Dance. Like I mentioned earlier, it's about the Chicago Bulls. If, you, if you're into sports documentaries, which I am, I absolutely love them. This one is about the Chicago Bulls in the nineteen ninety in the nineteen ninety. So this was. Did you pronounce it Chicago? Did you say Chicago? Chicago. Chicago. I don't know it, Chicago. You said Chicago. Is that what I said? Okay. Yeah, you well, said I meant Chicago. Chicago. Okay. So the Chicago Bulls. God damn it, Jace man! You got to get that right. It's not Chicago. It's Chicago. With Michael Jordan. English. English is not my first language. Well, it is, but yeah, I'll just say it. it's not my first language. In that case, English is not my first language either. I'm going to do the rest of this podcast in American accent. So watch Carry on. the last dance. It's about the last year of the Bulls, and in the yeah, it's interesting. It's I've really enjoyed it. it, it basically, they've, they've released the first two episodes and then they're going to release it weekly. So episode three coming out soon. So yeah, check it out. And that's for me, wraps up my entertainment. So what other things would you recommend, Rahi? Wait, actually, it's back to me, isn't it? Are you talking about entertainment? What do you mean it's, it's back to you? It's back to me. Ah, uh, what did I recommend? Uh, in terms of TV, you talking about? Yeah, no, just anything else apart from entertainment. So I guess I, I would recommend going for a walk. The weather is awesome. So I'd say just go out, enjoy stay socially distant from people but just get that exercise in just take a bit of fresh air in and just make sure you don't go to the park and cause shenanigans so that's my recommendations for this week okay i would say go for a walk as always i go for a walk every day now so when i finish what i'm doing so you're just recommending what i've just recommended no but i just um because i mentioned earlier about i'm how, joking how i'm joking walks. you can recommend that go ahead so i'm recommending walking i've enjoyed walking i either so i've oh so what i've been doing re- this week right i've been listening to some of my old albums that i've really enjoyed that i really enjoyed growing up so i've been i've been listening to like blueprint three i've listened to cold world sideline story you've been listening to pink floyd I, as well i haven't been listening to pink floyd but i heard that he's got a great album he oh or wow sh- or, sh- <laughs> or she <laughs> oh my god this is- <laughs> I don't know leave me alone no, I don't <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh yeah so you know last week I said about the app that you can talk to people from abroad oh yeah go on so that app is called Tandem so with Tandem you can chat to people it's basically like a social media app basically and you just basically just speak to people in a different like if you're learning French for example you can speak to someone who speaks French fluently and they can help you and if they maybe there's maybe they, they, they're they learning English then they can speak to you in English as well so you can basically like mix it up and both basically both of you try to learn each other's languages or try to get better at the language that you're both learning so yeah check it out if you're learning a language and want to interact can you imagine how many apps that we've now recommended that like we're basically giving up free publicity and free so all the apps that we've mentioned they need to basically start giving us a little something something you know but But in the meantime you know we are in the meantime we're doing it for the good we're yeah we're doing it for help you so help us help you so if if anyone has any other like cool apps or things that they know that they think can help people just dm us and let us know so we can share with others as well because we enjoy doing that we're enjoying doing that so hopefully you guys are learning little things and picking up little tricks here and there and if anything that you think can help us and the other listeners as well then let us know i think and on that note what is it about our socials again jace you want to help us out here so this week i'm very proud to announce that our instagram <laughs> is canvas yes. dot of life no underscore. wait what say that again our instagram is canvas dot of dot life brilliant underscore brilliant our Perfect. twitter is canvas of life one Check it out at the Canvas of Life on Facebook. And 
you can now check us out on our website at Rahi. What's our website? You forgot, didn't you? I actually haven't forgotten. I know what it is. I just, I just thought maybe I'll try and bring you back in. Brilliant. Okay, it's so our website w. is. Oh no, 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 this, I got this, I got this. No, there's no w, 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 w. It's www.canvas-of-life.com. And then you just press enter on your keyboards. So that is canvas-of-life.com. And if you didn't we want have... to hear that, it's canvas-of-life.com. Where Should we tell people we have... what we got, what we got on there? No, we leave it for a surprise so they can know. No, no, we don't know. We want to tell them. We, Fine. No, go on, no guys. Go tell them we have... Go tell them Go tell okay. them Okay. So we have been working really hard these last few weeks, basically, to bring you the vibes from all around the world. So we have stories from all around the world where we have people that we know. From all corners of the globe. From all corners of the globe. Other. Who have basically written us a blog to basically tell us what life is like in lockdown in their countries. We have people from the African continent. We have people from the European continent. And we have people from the Americas. And we have more to follow within the following weeks. So check out what we have out there. If you also would like to get involved, do give us a shout. If you have an amazing story or you just want to tell us what life is like in you, wherever you are right now, write us a blog, send it to us. At all our socials. And our email, canvasoflifemedia. At gmail.com. So check out our amazing blogs. Check out the stories that we have that we've have been written. We have some very talented writers. Thank you very much for putting it in, for all your hard work. And we're very excited to show you what's happening out there. And on that note. As always, we'd like to end with stay safe, stay inside. I don't even know what I say. I, I've even actually messed up. I think I change it every week. Every week I say it differently. But yeah, basically, stay inside, stay safe, <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.